So one of the most powerful features of using Office 365, in addition to be able to access your documents from any web browser, is the ability to share documents with your students or your peers. So in the past, if we wanted to share documents with somebody, very often we would either email it to them, they would work on it and then send it back to you, or we would put it in student share or teacher share and have that person access the document, make changes, and then save it, and nobody could work on the document at the same time. Office 365 eliminates all of those issues because any document that you create, you can share with anybody who is in our system or even who is not in our system. So what we're going to do here is uh, Tim Tebow has created a document for you. He's been working on a PowerPoint and he has shared it with everybody in this class so that everybody can collaborate on this one singular PowerPoint. And you can see this is great for students who are working on a common research project if they all need to access one particular document and work on it. They can do that now, whereas before they couldn't. So what you're going to be doing is you're going to log into your Office 365 account and you're going to go to OneDrive, so where you would see all your documents or any folders that you've created. Now, because Tim Tebow is the author of this document, it's not going to show up directly in your OneDrive. You will see on the left-hand side over here, you have a section that says Shared With Me. So anytime anybody shares anything with you, this is the area that it's going to go into. And if you share something with a colleague or a student, this is where you have to direct them to go. Because this account is not linked directly to your regular email address, they will not get any notification that you shared something with them unless you have notified them. So what you're going to do is once you've logged into Office 365 and into OneDrive, you're going to click on Shared With Me. And my Shared With Me is a big mess because I have a lot of things that people have shared with me. But that is where you're going to find any documents that somebody has shared with you. And you should see probably just this document unless you've been working with this for a while. You're going to look for one that says Summer Vacation Spots and you'll see it was modified by Tim Tebow. He was the creator of this document. Just a word on Shared With Me. Shared With Me recently underwent some change. Um, before, if somebody shared something with you, you were never able to delete it. It would just sit here. So you can see this is why my Shared With Me is very, very long because initially once somebody shared something with you, there was no way for me to get rid of it. Um, they have since changed that. So you can see now you can put check marks next to anything that you no longer want to see. It doesn't mean it's still not shared with you. It's just not going to be visible anymore. And you can remove it from your shared list. One other thing that you can't do with Shared With Me, and this is really important for teachers to know, is if you have students share something with you, let's say it's a final essay or it's some kind of project, and instead of emailing it, you have them share it with you, you can't organize anything in Shared With Me into folders. Okay, the way it comes, that's the way you're going to see it. So if you have 90 students and you have all 90 of your students submit one project, you're going to have a list of 90 things in your shared with me with no way to collapse it into folders. So just keep that in mind if you do choose to use that. All right, I'm going to remove these things because I don't need these anymore. And now I'm going to come back up to the document that Tim Tebow has shared with all of us that we're going to work on collaboratively. So I'm going to click on Summer Vacation Spots. And just like we did last week where you worked on a Word document in the online version, we're going to be doing that here. So when you first click on that document, it will open up in the online version of PowerPoint. Now, the online version of PowerPoint you're going to find is somewhat limited. It doesn't have every single tool that you would see in the full desktop version of PowerPoint. But for what we're doing today, you're going to have all the tools that you need to stay in the online version. Now, if you recall, if you want to edit something in the online version before you can do that, you have to come up over here where it says Edit Presentation, and then you have two options. Edit in PowerPoint would launch it into that full desktop version, which we don't need to do. And then Edit Browser is going to stay here in the online version. So I'm going to click Edit in Browser, and now this is going to give me the ability to make changes to this. So every one of you has a particular slide with your name on it that you will find. So this is called Favorite Summer Vacation Spots. So you can see here, this is one that I had put together. Don't mind this. I was just adding some things over here. And then you're just going to click down and you're going to look for a blank slide with your name on it where you can fill out information about your favorite vacation spot with the title of it, a picture of it, and then a little bit of text on it. And it doesn't matter if two of you happen to log in at the same time um, because everybody has access to this document no matter what. 
the only danger can be is, you know, if students were doing this and they were both trying to work on the same slide at the exact same moment, then they could potentially erase each other's work. But that doesn't really happen all that often, so it's not much to worry about. So once you've gotten to your slide, you will just add your text and you'll just start typing. You can see over here you have a lot of the menu tools and options that you would see in the full desktop version. And then for this case, mostly what you're going to be using is just straight text and you're going to be inserting an image. When you insert an image, um, just in case you're not sure how to do it, you have shortcuts over here that will allow you to do it. So this little icon over here, when you click on that, that will allow you to do a Bing search. So if your favorite vacation spot is Hawaii, you can type in Hawaii and it would bring it up and you can just choose the one that you want and click insert and it will fill that picture right into your, the spot. So I'm going to go back over here and undo that just so you get an idea of how that works. So if you're familiar with PowerPoint, this is not going to be that difficult. Once you're done with your slide, like I said, you're in the online version, so you don't have to hit save. All your changes are going to be continually saved as long as you are connected to the internet. Once you're done, all you need to do is close out of this, and then you can go back over to your OneDrive space, and you can continue working on in your one own OneDrive space, where you can, again, you can create folders, and you can move things into folders by dragging and dropping, like we talked about before. And that's about it.